All right, guys. I'm glad to see you back on the channel again. And uh, today we're um, basically riding around. Uh, it's weather's kind of breaking here in North Carolina. It's not getting as hot as it's been being. Um, it's been dreadfully hot um, the past few weeks, and it's been running us ragged, uh, working as much as we can. But um, enough with that. Um, I'm gonna give you what you came here for. Uh, we got another uh, no air conditioning situation going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the air conditioning. Not, all I know is the customer says it's not cooling. Um, at least that's what I, you know, I was told. So I'm going to talk to the customer, um, do our regular uh, procedure that we do all the time, and um, see what's going on with this thing. So if you want to know how I fix this AC system, tag along with me. And I'm going to show you just how to do it. So, let's get to this customer's house and uh, get started. Alright guys, I just talked to the homeowner and basically what they were saying is that um, the condensing unit will not come on. Uh, and they said it's about 80 degrees upstairs. Um, so, before I get in uh, to the service call, I'm just trying to make sure somebody's not watching me take myself. They might think I'm stupid. So, um, but anyway, they said the um, condensing unit won't come on and it's blowing hot air and they said it's about 80 degrees and they're upstairs. Their upstairs unit is out. So, uh, if you've been watching my videos for a while, uh, you kind of know my process and I want to get, if you're watching this to learn HVAC, um, I want to get this process uh, ingrained in you that if you do this same process that I check, it, you, you're, you're, It'd make your service calls quicker and you can know more about what's going on with the system the first thing i always do i go up to the thermostat turn it on if we got a digital thermostat and you have a display on the thermostat uh, and you know it could be battery i mean if they have batteries in there you have a display anyway but if you see the display um if it does not have a power in common onto the thermostat that'll tell you at least the furnace has power um, so you can't always check for the digital display if they have batteries of course but to counteract that one thing that we do is we turn on the cooling and we uh, check for see if the blower comes on if you've got air blown out of vents now that will tell you if you've got power going to your um, to your furnace or your air handler and um, so basically that will tell you that hey my, my thermostat's working, it's calling for, uh, for air conditioning, and my inside blower motor uh, more than likely is good. Um, from that point, I'd go to my outside unit, i check that, and then basically see what, what's going on there. So in the case of this um, service call, the customer already told me it's blowing air, um, it was not cooling, so our next step is to well, I'm going to carry you to the thermostat let you see. But uh, once I do that, uh, we you know, make sure we have air blow blowing out of the vents. I'm going to carry you to the uh, condenser. All right, our thermostat is on cooling. It's at 72. You can hear your air going in your return. So you know the blower is running. Let's go to the condenser. All right, we're going to the condensing unit. It's calling for air conditioning. Now this is the downstairs. We're not gonna worry about that. And as we can see, the condenser is not working. So there's something going on with the condensing unit. Is it the contactor? Is it the capacitor? Who knows, but we're gonna figure that out. So the first thing I do is cut power to unit number two. That way we don't shock ourselves and and die out here in this yard. So let's. And I keep thinking, I keep thinking somebody's walking up on me. I don't want to look stupid out here filming myself with the camera. But uh, all right. Anyway, let's uh, take the control panel off. Alright, 
Now we've done um, other videos on capacitors and things like that and a lot of times the capacitor will be oval or whatever but you know that that capacitor is bad. Uh, this capacitor is not ovaled out um, so I mean we're going to have to check that capacitor with the multimeter to see if that capacitor is good but the first thing that we're going to check is uh, power going to the contactor and where I want to check is here where your wires go into your contactor see basically your wires feed they go down into your contactor you have a set of contacts here that will close when it's calling for air conditioning and send your um, send power to all of your parts so what we need to do first we need to check that power to see if we're getting around 240 volts so let me get my multimeter now my multimeter I've got it set for 600 uh, volts AC because we always want to have that set for over. We don't want to have it set for 200 because we're going to be looking for 240 amps. So let me get this where I can hold the camera. What we need to do first, we need to turn our power back on. We want to check here at our contactor. Now we have 244 volts. Now the second thing we want to do to figure this out, we need to see if your contactor is closing. So we need to check right here to make sure we got power going to our contactor. So we will check here. And we have nothing. So basically either we're not getting, you're not getting power going through your contactor. So the next step we need to do is we need to check the, um, the uh, power for our coil of the contactor so you have a coil up under here if you can see it now you have a low voltage hooked to that coil and you're supposed to be getting 24 volts because you have it's called yellow from your thermostat and you also have a common because that's the only time it'll actually pull in the uh, the contacts and send power to our AC so let's check that I forgot to set this down to 200 so but all right guys I'm not getting uh, power to my uh, uh, to my contactor my low voltage 24 volts and see those two wires wiring right there and that's powered from your furnace so basically what we're going to need to do it sounds like the problem is actually up in the attic um, so we need to go up there, see what is um, causing that, and uh, I'll bring you back as soon as we're in that. All right, guys, I'm here at the furnace, trying to talk a little, little low. But uh, the first thing I found when I come up here is basically there's water in the drain pan. Let me show you this. You have a float switch in your drain pan. Now, if your float switch, if you have water in the pan and your float switch comes up, that will turn your outside condensing unit off. More than times when you have a condensing unit that's not coming on. Sorry, it's hot and static. I'm trying to be kind of trying to be quiet. Uh, that will keep your 24 volts from going to your contactor. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this water out. Uh, I'm going to turn everything back on. And that, alright, getting ahead of myself. Usually what, what causes the um, water to get in your pan like that is your drain is stopped up. And here's your drain here. And it usually gets stopped up in this trap right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this... Um, this pipe and what I'm going to use to to clean that drain is I'm just going to blow through it I'm going to use my the air put my mouth blow through it blow through it the other way that will be enough to actually clear any clouds you have 
once we clear the drain line, we need to go check the Freon charge because if it's low in Freon charge, the system can ice up the evaporator coil. Could ice up and that can also cause water in your drain pan. So let's first clean this uh, drain line and then let's go back out and see if that condensing unit comes on. Alright, uh, well I'll show you. I'll show you how I do that. I hope you guys can see. It's a little dark up here. flashlight right now I'm gonna take my pipe cutters and we'll cut right here all right it's hard doing this I've got a little three uh, quarter inch coupling that we're going to use to pop this back on uh, once we clear it out and uh, Basically, we will glue it. I'm gonna show you how I clean it. Once I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue it, pop it back together, and uh, see if that outside unit comes on. So, so let me show you how to do the, the drain first. Like I say, it's just tough doing this by myself and without a light. Let's see, watch, I just take it right here. I can tell you that's what your problem was. Um, the drain was completely stopped. When you blow through it, you can feel the clog blow out because you'll have resistance against the uh, where the clog is. Once the clog goes outside, you know that the drain is clear. So next, what we're going to do is, um, well, first, I'm going to save you this step. I'm just go get some water out of this pan, which basically you can you can do that by um, a shop vac or something like that. I'm going to take my coupling, I'm going to put it back, I'm going to glue it, stick it back together, and make sure we don't have any leaks. And I'm pretty sure we're going to take care of this, but once after we do that, we'll go um, check our freedom. So, I'll see you outside. Alright, forgive me for sweating everywhere, it's hot in that attic, it's probably like 115 degrees. But we got everything glued back, um, uh, we got the water out of the pan, so let's check this See if we were right. Hey, what do you know? We got power to our condensing unit now. Now, what's the next thing that we did? We check our Freon. All right. So, let's take our caps off. Let's take this other cap off. Alright, let's hook a uh, high side up. Oh gosh. Sorry, any of you heating and air guys out there. I lost my uh my little turn off on my gauges. So uh we'll lose a little bit on the high side. Alright. Now we got a pressure. I know this is an R22. Wow. We got a pressure of 95 and 325. That was 80 plus degrees up in that attic. That's really high. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to wash this evaporator. Um, not evaporator. This uh, condensing coil down. Um, being that high of a uh, of pressures, I know that it's not low in Freon. I'm going to clean this coil, um, get those pressures down a little bit uh, if we can. Uh, just try to do as much as we can to get the pressures down. But once the temperature in the house gets down um, a little bit more normal, these pressures will down will go down as well. Um, always make sure when you're checking Freon that you always check your subcooling. Now, just for an essence of time, 
um, and all that we kind of, kind of showed you so far. I'm not going to go into the point of checking super heat and subcooling. I have a video on that. You can watch it in depth and you can figure out how to charge any system. I'm not going to take um, me cleaning the condensing coil because I have a video for it. Hey, I want you guys to watch all my videos, so what better way to do it than to promote other videos I have. So basically, once I do this evaporator, why don't I keep calling this an evaporator? What's wrong with me? As soon as I clean this condensing coil, my pressure should get a little bit more normal. And then basically, once the temperature cools down upstairs, our pressure should go back to where they normally should be. And always, when you do a service call, I'm not going to take this for a time as well. You need to check your temperature drop. And what I mean by your temperature drop is the temperature between your return and your supply. Actually, what's going into the, the evaporator cool, what's going out. Always make sure that the temperature from the temperature in the house to the temperature coming out of your evaporator coil is 18 degrees, right around 18 degrees. Um, could be 17, 19, 20, 21, somewhere around there, but somewhere around 18 degrees. If you check your, always ingrain this into yourself. If you check your temperature drop before you leave the house and you're getting a proper temperature drop, 99% of the time, you're not going to get that call from the customer. Oh, whoever just left my house and uh, and basically it's not cooling. And we've all run into that sometime and in, in, in the past, I've had it had to me if I'm in a rush and, and, and don't check it. But always check your temperature drop. If you got the proper temperature drop, when you before you leave the house, 99% of the time that customer is not going to call you back and you know you ain't got to go back and, you know, look like a fool that, oh my God, there was one other thing that I didn't check that I missed and, you know, the customer think, hey, there, those people are trying to screw me or something like that. So if you make it a habit of always checking your temperature drop, uh, you'll have a lot more happy customers and you will have a lot less headache. So, I'm going to start cleaning this coil, I'm going to start uh, taking a super heat and subcooling, and uh, we should have another happy customer, as always guys, I tried to tell you how to do it right. I hope you guys are learning something from this, I um, hope you enjoy the content, I'm, I'm still new at talking on the camera and getting comfortable with that, but I'm trying to part, give you some of the knowledge that I have, uh, I've been in this business for 20 plus odd, odd years, and uh, I'm just going to share this with the new guys that are coming out. If there's homeowners that are have problems, you know, they want to save a little bit of money, they can uh, uh, look at these videos and maybe it'll help save them a little bit. And I just, I, and I enjoy doing this for you guys as well. So in the end, we all uh, benefit from it. So uh, if you guys enjoyed it, please, as always, uh, subscribe to me, hit a like on here, be kind. And uh, I was, as always, I'll see you on the next video. I'm looking forward to it. See ya.